We're still joined by the cardiologist, Professor Graf. Now, 4% less sclerosis in the arteries. Is that a lot? Yes, it is a lot. But uh, what does it tell us? We know this is just a short-term uh, short study and we don't have really hard end endpoints for the outcome of the patients. Do they have another infarction or do they have less infarction? Do they have less angina? So uh, for that question, it, I would say yes, but there is not a definite answer if this concept really holds for long-term treatment. Mm -hmm. and the, no, actually, the finding is pretty old. That's four or five years old. How come we still don't have a therapy? Well, that's that's a very good good observation. This, the problem is when they when they um, the, performed this study is that this application is very cost intensive and production intensive. So we, you have a protein mix which has to be freshly prepared, which has to be kept frozen until treatment. And this is not a good strategy for, uh, let's say, a public disease where you want to increase HDL levels by a drug. You can't put everybody under infusion. I don't know, I don't know, I don't any, know any system which can afford such an expensive treatment. The do we have to suspect that pharma industry wouldn't make enough money with that? It's probably not only that, it's probably also that the, the, the public insurances wouldn't, right. can't, can't afford such a treatment for a large, such a large group of uh, people who wouldn't, would really mm -hmm. have a benefit of such a treatment. I mean, another chance would actually be to just raise the level of the good cholesterol, HDL. Uh, aren't uh, doctors actually trying that? Well, there, is, there are a lot of attempts. I think there's a drug which has recently stopped and took, taken from the market. Mm -hmm. um, and there are new approaches which kind of mimicking what, what the GADA gene really told us, that there is something you change and then you get an improvement of, of the HDL and you get a, a, a benefit for cardiovascular disease. And I'm, I'm quite hopeful that there's coming new drugs which can be also taken orally and that would be really making a good concept for a new treatment. Thanks a lot for the talk, Professor Christoph Graf. You're welcome.